Hey everybody, my name is Natalie Hudson. I am the Fine Arts Department Chair here at Cambridge, and I am here to talk to you about the different courses that we offer in the Fine Arts program, specifically visual arts, and the ones that I teach especially. So um, this video is about the painting program that we offer here at Cambridge, and I wanted to just kind of touch on a few things, show you some things to consider, and then send you on your way. So Mainly, I hope that as you are considering your electives for next year or even in the future after that, um, that you start to consider a little thing that I like to kind of share with all of my students who are in the visual arts. Um, and that is, I want you to think about what other time in your life, which you may not be able to think about right now, but when else will you be, be provided the opportunity to spend an hour a day all week for an entire semester and potentially all year, guaranteed the opportunity to make work with your hands, okay? That doesn't happen when you leave high school because you get so busy with other things unless you schedule yourself the time and you pay for additional courses or you enroll in classes in college or however you decide to, to pursue, pursue that avenue. So. My greatest recommendation that I can come up with is to think about guaranteeing yourself the opportunity to be around other people who are interested in the same kinds of things as you, who want to learn about new processes or materials that maybe they don't get to work with on a normal basis, and also to just have a good time. Come in, relax, make some work, enjoy the process, and learn. You know, so we don't get those guarantees very often. And I think that the art courses are the greatest opportunity for that in high school. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just share my screen on my other computer here. Let me make sure it pops up on this side. Good. So um, the best place for you to go to reference information is to go to chsfineart.wordpress.com. We have a full website of all kinds of information that can help you through your decision-making process. But within that process, um, that website, you'll see that there's a painting tab. And in that painting tab, it's just basic and generalized um, information that has to do with our content that we cover in painting, specifically painting one and painting two. So um, within painting one, our focus is typically um, acrylic paint. So learning how to use acrylic, understanding color, and working through different styles or techniques of painting. Um, nobody coming into any of these classes is expected to be an artist. You are all learning. Um, you are all developing the process. And my job as the educator is to teach you how, right, to share that information with you um, give you tips and techniques that can help you develop your craft and um, facilitate the process with you rather than force along the way things that we must do. So we do project kind of things. I definitely keep us all going on the same types of tasks, but ultimately my goal is that you learn what makes you tick as an artist and what you're most interested in um, as far as your mark making style, because everybody's hands do something a little bit different. Um, so if you look at painting one or painting two on the art website, you'll notice that there are a bunch of videos there. Um, these are all videos that we kind of have embedded into the program that are supportive to the process, but not necessarily a direct tutorial. Um, and you can see in painting two, um, we develop layering skills, composition skills, we do try to branch out in media in painting too. COVID era, things have been a little bit different. Um, typically in painting two, I approach watercolor and oil painting, whereas painting one is very driven toward acrylic and mastery of technique um, because it's easiest to control and clean. So then we migrate into things that have a little bit more finesse in painting two um, with an uncertainty of what happens with the school year, um, especially as we had to evolve through the school year of 2020, 2021. Um, we've adapted a little bit, but the students are, you all will definitely get the same kinds of information that we've had all along. 
Um, and many of the students currently have said that they've really um, benefited from a guaranteed opportunity to make something with their hands um, because they're so tired of a screen, right? So I would strongly recommend considering those types of thought processes because in moments of crisis, a lot of us are resorting to the humanities in some way. Um, and painting is one of those things that can be so soothing for nothing more than just using your hand to move material. Um, so in the top right corner of the screen, you'll see just a, a photo that I took of students in process years ago. Um, we have workspace where students can set up, they can have their own area. Um, specifically speaking to this school year, we do have a very good socially distant kind of arrangement going on, depending on how many people are in the, the classroom space at the same time. Um, and then you can see what's happening in this actual image is a more advanced painting class. Um, the students are selecting their sizes. They are working on alternative materials like wood. Um, they're really expressing their ideas in a different kind of way. So painting allows for that, as does drawing. Um, and you know, there's things to kind of consider if you prefer wet media, so things that respond to water, or if you prefer more dry and technical media like in drawing. Um, the main thing that you really want to think about is when else are you going to get this opportunity to join with a community of other people and produce work, right? To learn together, um, to enjoy each other's company, to get to know someone who's not in your grade, um, because a lot of the visual arts courses are interdispersed based on interest. So people sign up and they could very easily be a freshman all the way through to a senior. And I've, ha I've seen really wonderful relationships form through common interest of just having the same class and starting a conversation. So I'll leave you with the bottom corner of this um, screen where you can see that there is um, a screenshot of the classroom. And I just set up a camera so you can see I'll see that. So the, the classroom is very large. Um, we have wonderful facilities and wonderful equipment that frankly is not accessible to a very large population of high schools. Um, I've been in the district for a long time. I have colleagues in other districts and this is the space that everybody fawns over when they come to see it. So we're incredibly fortunate um, to have this opportunity and I, I highly recommend giving it a shot um, because anybody can paint, anybody can draw. It just takes a leap of faith to trust yourself to practice. Um, the other thing to consider is that with all visual arts courses, there's the opportunity to earn the fine art diploma seal, which is a participation uh, of a certain amount of courses. That link is on the art website as well. Um, and I'll be doing a video for that. And then in addition, you could pass through a multiple series of courses to then obtain um, your opportunity to take AP Art and Design, which there will be in a video too as well. So AP Art and Design is a very atypical AP course um, and requires a certain caliber of a student being ready to go. And if you'd be interested in AP, I'd encourage you to watch that video. But more than anything, just enjoy yourself, make some things, enjoy your time while you have it, and um, celebrate the chance to bring each other together through something as simple as color on a canvas. Thanks.